We're here for one thing, and that is Echo Arena, and that is to push VR and esports forward and be the pioneers going into the future. What's, what's the point? This is getting a little ridiculous. And if you or anybody ever wanted even more evidence that Meta or what used to be Oculus really doesn't care about you at all, well, something just happened that should give you all of the evidence that you should ever need. And it's probably only gonna get worse from here on. And to be real, it's getting to the point now that I have no clue how Meta is even getting away with this. If this were any other segment of gaming, really any other company in the gaming industry, this would not be okay. This would be everywhere. Everyone would be talking about it. And the company would either have to change or be voted the worst company in the world twice in a row and then change. But that just isn't going to happen with Meta. And I have a pretty good feeling I know exactly why. But you know what? Let's just calm down a little bit. What exactly happened here? Let me just start from the top. But warning, this actually gets pretty deep, so buckle up. It was just announced in a Medium post that the longtime classic Echo VR will lose official support immediately, and that the servers will be terminated August 1st of this year. Echo VR being developed by Ready at Dawn, one of the many meta-owned VR game studios previously responsible for some pretty big games, including one of my favorite VR games of all time. And honestly, this isn't all that weird. This sort of thing happens in games all the time, and it's kind of the problem with live service games and general. You play them until either you get bored or they get shut down. And after they're shut down, they're just gone forever. But usually, they don't just get shut down randomly. Big things have to happen. Either a company goes bankrupt, or there just aren't enough players playing the game to make it worth keeping the servers up, or some crazy weird legal battle happen. And this is exactly where the fishy weird part comes in. Look, I don't need to tell you that VR is pretty niche. VR in general just doesn't pull in the numbers that Call of Duty or Overwatch or Fortnite does, obviously. But there are still millions of active daily VR users between the Quest in PC VR and PS VR, and the vast majority of them are on the Quest 2. And things start looking really fishy when you realize that Echo VR is one of the most popular VR games on the entire market. And it's also one of, if not the most popular multiplayer game that Meta owns. And it's certainly one of, if not the most popular eSport that Meta owns, with the only competition being Onward. And it's had seven seasons of paid cosmetics from this very active user base, including seven battle passes. So it can't be a money thing. So why is it getting shut down then? And here's what the company had to say. At Ready at Dawn, we pride ourselves on being open and communicative with our community. To that end, we have news to share. After many discussions internally and with our partners at Meta, we have made the difficult decision to shut down Echo VR. And it was made for many good reasons, and chief among them is that the studio is coming together to focus on our next project. We can't say anything about it yet, but we are all excited and need all hands on deck." End quote. Okay, so I'm not sure who made the decision at either Meta or Ready at Dawn to go shut down the entire game, but I just have to ask whoever made that decision, just how out of touch with your own community of your game and your platform do you really have to be? And you know what? Here's just a small snippet of a video that I came across from a year ago by the community of Echo VR. Just, just watch this for a second and I think my tone will make sense here. Echo VR to me is a promise from my childhood fulfilled. Echo Arena is way more than just a regular computer game. It transcends what the most people would call a game. And I've probably met my closest friends that I'll ever have because of this game. There's a person that I met in Echo that I will be marrying this coming fall. Just my So one of the most important aspects will be live service games like Echo VR, Beat Saber, Onward. We're focused on this a lot right now, making sure games can build out active communities. Oh boy. This is the game that you're shutting down? This is the community that you're smashing out of existence? And it's not like the game is failing either. Relatively, in terms of games and companies that Meta owns, this is pretty much Meta's biggest IP that they own. Except for Beat Saber, but that's Beat Saber. And it's almost the equivalent of like if Microsoft stopped supporting Halo and just said, sorry, Infinite shuts down in five months. We need all hands on deck to make whatever game is next. Sorry about all the time you spent, sorry about all the money you've spent, but we've thought really hard about this and this is the best decision for us. What? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so this actually does get a lot more complex and way more interesting and really tells a lot about what's going behind the scenes at Meta. And oh boy, we're gonna get into that. But I gotta make a point real quick. For a game that has a very active user base, a user base that has spent hundreds of dollars each user and thousands of hours within it, and for a community as dedicated to not only Echo VR as a game, but Ready at Dawn and Meta as well, does it really take that much extra work just to keep servers up so these people can just keep playing? So that their money and their time wasn't just poof, gone. Or even just move to peer to peer, no server costs, you don't even have to update it, just let people play on forever. But I also know that it can't be a cost thing. You're freaking owned by Meta, the biggest spender on the metaverse in the world. You guys brag about dropping 10 billion like it's nothing. And I know Meta is going through some very heavy budget cuts, but if this is where you're really cutting your budget, Meta has their priorities way wrong. Because if this is true, this proves something that I've known in the back of my head for a long time that I've really tried to ignore. But not only does Meta not give a crap about you, but they really don't give a crap about you. And they obviously don't give a crap about VR's current user base either. All they give a crap about is what they can attain in the future. Because if they did, there's no way they could ever make a decision like this. There just has to be some ulterior motive, otherwise I'm crazy. Easy, right? Either Ready at Dawn has a new game on the way that they just haven't announced yet, and they really don't want to split their player base for a new game, or maybe they're pulling the good old Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 thing where they discontinue the service of one to start the next, which only really works if you announce the next thing first before you cancel the first one. Or there's something way weirder going on, and it has to do with something you probably didn't expect. Gorilla Tag. Put your tinfoil hat on, boys and girls. This is a bit of a rabbit hole, but it may explain exactly why Echo VR is about to be dead. And it's not just because Meta doesn't care. It's more than likely because Ready at Dawn, Meta's first big acquisition and developer of Echo VR, is incapable of working on Echo VR. They more than likely no longer even have the talent to do so. And I will say, if you do have the talent, then prove us all wrong. You can do it. But back to my reasoning. Ready at Dawn isn't some indie studio. Looking at their previous titles, they have some of the most talented developers out there. In fact, the reason why Echo VR and Lone Echo are so crazy good is because they pioneered VR game development and practically made this out of nothing back in 2017. But after a meta acquisition, some high-level developers leaving the company or being put on other meta projects entirely, well, there's a thing called employee attrition, where talent leaves a company but is never replaced. And this couldn't be more true than this story I'm about to tell you. And this is gonna blow your mind. So let's go all the way back to the three original Echo VR beta testers, later becoming world finalist in an Echo VR VR esports competition. Obviously, all three of these guys loved VR, and all three of them eventually even built their own VR games or applications out of their inspiration and love for VR. One of them built something called Vertex Stadium, an app that actually later helped with Echo VR tournaments. Another built something called Grab, and the last beta tester is known as Lemming, and he made a little game that you guys might recognize Gorilla Tag. What? But it actually gets a little spicier. Not only was Gorilla Tag built by one of the most successful hardcore OG Echo VR players of all time, but its massive breakout success, which shouldn't be understated, attracted a couple of people that are very important to the story. In a since-deleted blog post from only six months ago, Lemming announced that his two new hires were David Yi, a director and studio manager at Oculus for seven years who then became Gorilla Tag's new chief operating officer, and David Newbelt, project lead at Ready at Dawn for 14 years and 10 months, and the project lead for Echo VR. David Newbelt came on as the chief technical officer of another Axiom, which is Gorilla Tag's company. And here we are. You know what? Just, uh, just, just let that sink in for a moment. Gorilla Tag may have killed Meta's biggest VR game. Of course, we don't know that. There could be a million factors here, and it's not the fault of Gorilla Tag or Lemming, Ready at Dawn has been in what feels like development hell for a long time. Just look at Lone Echo 2, come on. And I don't blame the executives for leaving Ready at Dawn, especially after being acquired by Meta and talent likely being attrited out of the company, especially leaving for something like Gorilla Tag, which is a true sensation right now. I mean, it's a good move career-wise. And 
After digging all this up, I honestly think that Ready at Dawn is just a skeleton crew with a ghost at the helm. The people that made Lone Echo and Echo VR what it was are scattered all over Meta Reality Labs or in different companies or maybe even laid off in this giant round of layoffs. And the only way this decision makes sense is if Ready at Dawn is completely incapable of working on Echo VR moving forward, which is why it's dying. And looking at all this, that seems pretty likely. And like like I said, if I'm wrong here, checkmate, prove me wrong. Because this still isn't okay. I don't care if you have a skeleton crew or if Ready at Dawn has been picked clean by Reality Labs so badly that they only have interns left. You can't leave your game and entire community to just die. And if the entire team is still there at Ready at Dawn, which I really hope is not the case because that really means that you don't care about your player base, all you have to do is something super basic and simple. Don't kill the game, keep the servers up. This is not a dead game. You don't have to kill it. It's one of the only games like it ever made, and it still has hundreds of active players. In fact, this is the game that was the background of my very first video on this channel. This has a deep connection with VR history and the VR community. And Meta, if you're really so broke that you gotta take down servers, at least make it peer-to-peer -peer before doing so, so it's not completely wasted. Because if you take this down, not only are thousands of people's hard-earned money and time playing the game, just gonna be gone forever to never be accessed again, but all the work of the developers that made this game is just poof, gone as well. And come on, just show us that you care a little bit. This is your core community. And well, if there's one thing I do guarantee you, it's that this VR industry is very small. And I don't know personally if I could ever trust Ready at Dawn ever again after this, if this actually goes through. It's really sad from one of my favorite developers of all time to this. And I know that I'm not the only one. Maybe it was the meta acquisition. Maybe it was Gorilla Tag. Maybe it was a combination of so many things that I can't even wrap my brain around. Either way, just don't kill the game Ready at Dawn. It's easy. Keep Echo VR alive, not just for another year, not just for two. Let it live forever, peer to peer. It's what the community deserves. Whew, well, well, that was uh, something for sure. And if you've been around all my other content and the channel, you would have noticed that I haven't been uploading nearly as much. And it's because I'm really trying to figure out where I want to take this channel. And I think I have some pretty fun changes coming, but definitely have some patience with me. And also let me know if you enjoyed this kind of like, you know, something happened and I just made a video about it. I do gotta say though, Tuesday Newsday isn't going anywhere, but I'm gonna be rethinking the formula for a while. In the meantime though, you can expect more things like this as long as you guys like it. And quite a few new fun hardware videos with the return of Virtually Odd. I've been waiting for that. And I think it's time for a newly updated Thrill Seeker, you know, brave the next year of VR 2023. And we do it together. And I just want to say again, thank you to all my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I've been posting a bunch of behind the scenes content on there. It's pretty dope. So check it out. Your support makes all of this possible. But until next time, don't forget to like this video if you loved it. Subscribe if you want more of this and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love. Thrill out.